A handful of things come to mind when you think of classic Americana. It might be car culture of the 1950s, baseball, which is America's pastime, traveling Route 66, or even reading the iconic publication, The Saturday Evening Post. The Saturday Evening Post dates back to 1821 and evolved from Ben Franklin's print shop located at number 53 Market Street in Philadelphia. Samuel Atkinson, the owner of the print shop, started the Saturday Evening Post with just 200 subscribers and began delivering the magazine with the second mail delivery on Saturdays. Up until the 1950s, the U.S. mail was delivered twice daily, and pressmen often had to work deep into Friday night to get an issue out the next day. The Post's first issue appeared on August 4, 1821. The magazine began as densely packed text in tight columns on both sides of the page. At this time, it was up to the reader to visualize whatever was going on in the articles. During the 19th century, the Saturday Evening Post chronicled the changing fortunes of the country, the building of the Transcontinental Railroad, the gold rush, and the settling of the Western territories. It also brought reports of several conflicts, including the Civil War. The publication gained a reputation for high quality writing. In 1897, Cyrus Curtis, the publisher of the Ladies' Home Journal, purchased the Saturday Evening Post for $1,000. Improvements were made to the magazine, including newly designed pages. In 1899, the magazine featured its first full cover illustration, which actually led to a loss in subscribers. Curtis believed in the success of this magazine so much, he had invested over a million dollars into it by 1908. His gamble paid off, and his subscribers grew to over a million this same year. The cost to produce the magazine was higher than the income produced by the subscriptions, with the magazine costing only five cents. Curtis understood the importance of advertising in driving the growth of his publication, and was the first one to really embrace it on a large scale. The Saturday Evening Post was thoughtful in selecting ads that were honest and wholesome for their loyal readers. The popularity of the magazine was not only due to Curtis and his financial backing, but rather the kind of stories that appealed to the country at large. This could not have been done without editor-in-chief George Lorimer, who strived to not follow the current of other publications. Lorimer introduced the country to some of the most famous writers of the time, including Jack London and Rudyard Kipling, and also made the illustrative cover art of the Saturday Evening Post its most effective advertising tool. The very first color cover of the Post appeared on September 30, 1899. Readers came to look forward to seeing the next Post cover, with illustrations from well-known artists like Andrew Wyeth, J.C. Leyendecker, and George Hughes. But you can't mention the Saturday Evening Post without mentioning the great Norman Rockwell. In 1916, a 22-year-old Rockwell received his first Post commission, and this continued for the next 47 years. During this time, Rockwell produced 322 original cover illustrations for the magazine. His work connected with readers, displaying everyday life in an idealistic way. From various scenes of summertime fun to family holidays, Rockwell's work on the cover of the Saturday Evening Post became an integral part of what American life was all about. Because of the playful covers created by Rockwell, the Post swelled to nearly 7 million subscribers by 1960.
After Lorimer retired in 1936, the Post continued to thrive under new leadership. It wasn't until 1963 that the magazine's popularity started to fall. The widespread access to televisions was maybe most to blame, but there were other factors, like competition and lawsuits, that caused the magazine to go deep into debt. By 1969, the company was $67 million in debt, and it was forced to suspend its publication. That same year, the Saturday Evening Post was purchased by Burt Servas, and headquarters were moved to Indianapolis, Indiana. With the help of his wife, Corey, they brought the publication back to life. Even Norman Rockwell announced he would be producing covers for them again, which made subscriptions jump by nearly 350,000. The magazine is now a part of a nonprofit owned by the Benjamin Franklin Literary Society, which was formed by Corey Servas. The magazine is published six times annually and continues to focus on celebrating America. For nearly 200 years, the Saturday Evening Post has entertained readers with engaging stories of people all across this country. The pages were filled with visuals, not just within the articles, but also within the many popular advertisements that graced its pages. For many, the Saturday Evening Post was a mirror of American society and continues to be a fond memory of the decades that have passed.